Thank you for inviting me uh, to share uh, some of my um, work and ideas around the area of supply chain and resource sustainability. I've been given a few talks uh, in various uh, venues, um, and uh, this is one of the key uh, areas that we are uh, working uh, on at, at, at the moment. Um, I think today uh, we have uh, heard a lot of uh, fantastic talk, especially from environmental and from social perspective. I think that's fascinating. I learned a lot uh, today and understand more about what Sheffield uh, is good at and areas uh, for future improvement, uh, especially something that perhaps uh, Sheffield Green Commission uh, can consider uh, taking uh, forward. But uh, my perspective today is really uh, coming from uh, the supply chain perspective. Uh, from the economic perspective and from the business perspective. Because for a city, for a city to be sustainable, uh, it is very important that not only uh, the space is uh, livable, uh, the environment is green, we respect to nature, uh, we uh, save energy and so on and so forth, but the vibrancy of the economic and the business and the supply chains has to be going hand in hand uh, with that sustainable growth. And because without that, there is no cities to live in. There is no business, there is no shops, there is no retail, there is no supermarket, there is no place that you can get uh, things that you need, uh, for instance. So it is absolutely crucial to ensure that uh, businesses are part of this uh, picture. Now, there are many things that business can do uh, in order to improve their resource efficiency and sustainability, just like uh, you and I. Uh, so there are a lot of best practice out there, uh, whether this is in the area of uh, using uh, waste and turning waste into resources, or whether this is in terms of recycling, where you turn waste and scrap into something useful, useful as an input uh, into another production systems, and so on. So it's absolutely crucial that we should not um, forget, forgot uh, about uh, those business dimensions. <coughs> So there are a few key critical resources, uh, in my opinion, that we should uh, consider uh, in designing a sustainable uh, city for future growth. Uh, these include energy, food, materials, manufacturing, medical and healthcare, water and transport. I'm sure these are not uh, limited, uh, but I think these are the fundamental critical basic infrastructure that any city or region would need in order to ensure that the communities uh, and the systems uh, is, is sustainable. Uh, and they actually consume a lot of resources, uh, whether this is in terms of financial resources, or energy, or water. So it's absolutely crucial that we shouldn't uh, forget about how we protect and maintain the sustainability of our infrastructure. There are various uh, targets that ones uh, are aware of uh, in order to um, reduce uh, our environmental burden, whether this is target for 2030 or 2035 or 2050. It's absolutely, absolutely crucial that we also need to think about how we are going to design uh, a city or ecosystems uh, that is um, capable of managing the pathway through uh, from a more resource efficient a city uh, to a more resource sustainable city. Uh, it is uh, important that uh, one should think about incremental change and that incremental change perhaps uh, can be facilitated uh, by uh, improving resources uh, more efficiently in terms of their consumption. So um, the new idea uh, around this is the notion and the paradigm of circular economy. So I don't know uh, whether you have heard about this idea of circular economy. So the idea of circular economy is you turn waste into resources. So it is a closed loop system. So it shouldn't bring uh, and throw things away into landfill because things uh, that uh, can be recovered uh, can be turned back into the supply chain or it can be turned back into um, a facility whereby it can be uh, remanufactured or upcycled into something that is useful. And we are relying a lot on critical uh, materials and critical resources. And sometimes these critical materials and resources are not within reach, uh, for instance, from Sheffield or even nationally in the UK. Sometimes there are only one or two mines that are available in certain part of the world. And uh, due to geopolitical re political reason, uh, it is uh, important that one should protect uh, availability and accessibility to critical resources. And uh, hence, it is very important for us to understand what uh, resources are critical, what resources are not critical, and what can be turned uh, into um, uh, resources so that we can develop something along the idea of circular economy, whereby uh, those uh, 
useful uh, ways can be turned into resources. For instance, um, what we are doing here in Sheffield Cities uh, is turning uh, waste, household waste, into energy, low grade heat into energy. There are a lot of existing uh, examples that we are already uh, using and um, experiencing, but obviously there are more that can be done around this area, uh, but also from business uh, perspective. So with this in mind, what we have done is we developed something that is um, quite scientific uh, in terms of helping organisations to make uh, more smarter and greener decisions. So the idea uh, is we build uh, from an existing tool that we have developed several years ago, which is called a SENET, a Supply Chain Environmental Analysis Tool. So what we are going to do uh, is, uh, sometimes in the autumn this year, we are going to launch an enhanced version of SENET, uh, which will allow not only uh, carbon accounting, of where is a carbon hotspot in your supply chain, but also it will pinpoint exactly what is your uh, wider uh, sustainability burden, including energy, uh, water, toxicity, land use, etc., etc. In addition to that, it will also benchmark your performance of your supply chain against <coughs> industry average, so you know exactly how well or how bad you have done as compared to your uh, industry uh, average. Uh, we are also uh, bringing in life cycle costing uh, into, into this decision support too. So the idea is, uh, it is not just about at the macro level that one should consider in order to change policy, but obviously that is very, very important, but also having something that's tangible where businesses, businesses can use in order to uh, manage uh, their day-to-day -day, uh, resources and decision-making. Thank you. Thank you.